Well, uh, in my previous lecture, we discussed about the uh, hitching of the implements of different kinds, the uh, pull type implements in the vertical and horizontal hitching as well as three point linkage hitching. Now, when we have this hitching with the tractor, what is the mechanics behind uh, the implement and tractor combination and what are the different prediction models which people have uh, developed over the years, the researchers have done over the years in order to find out the total draft requirement and hence the total power requirement because this will help us in designing a particular equipment for matching uh, to the power source. Let us have a look at the different uh, uh, slides, through these slides we will uh, go through and I have uh, named this lecture as mechanics of tractor implement hitch system and traction prediction models. Yes, mechanics of tractor implement combination under static condition. Well, you must have seen that when the tractor is simply standing condition and when they this this P is 0, a very simple what I have done through this slide different slides you will find that I have made things very simple and not complicated by keeping all the forces acting in on the uh, in the soil and the uh, wheel at one point of time, so that you can understand step by step how are these things happening. So, in, the, in this one we have given a very simple diagram which will talk of the uh, front reaction, this is the uh, rear reaction and there is a um, uh, P load P here which I have assumed to be 0, then in this condition only the CG the chassis uh, uh, center of gravity of the tractor is over here and this total weight is WT. So, if you take a um, forces in the vertical direction we get this only and if you take moment here that you get RF is equal to this and RR is equal to this. Now, the moment there is a force on to this there will be change uh, in the these reaction forces. So, those uh, thing we call as weight transfer that the moment there is a value of P when P is positive not 0 more than that then there will be a uh, weight transfer taking place between these and two, these and these uh, sides. We will talk of this slightly later. Now, let us go to the next slide. Here. Well, <coughs> But before I go to um, actual show you the uh, differences, I have um, tried to make you understand how that aspect of uh, the say this here Now, this. So, <clears throat> now you can see that these are the forces the RR and RF here. So, if you consider this with respect to this particular figure, particular problem, we find that in, in very easily we can find out what is the uh, horizontal distance from the rear axial center line to the center of gravity of the tractor. The center of gravity is if it is here, we are interested to know what is this distance. This is wheel base, we know this to this is wheel base, uh, it has been already said earlier. So, taking uh, a simple moment as we mm, described earlier, you can find out what is the value of L1 here. And once you know the value of L1, uh, there is another aspect which is asked identify if the tractor is two wheel drive or four wheel drive. The total weight is given over here. So, it is such that the moment we know that uh, on a two wheel drive tractor the weight distribution is slightly different about 60 to 65 percent I have said earlier also and the rest weight on the rear wheels. But when the weight is uh, approximately 50 percent on both sides then we call that tractor to be a uh, four wheel drive tractor. 
So, that uh, is the um, hint I have given here that when it if you two wheel drive tractor with distribution uh, front and rear axle are approximately 35 and 65 and for a four wheel drive it is 50 percent and on that basis you can answer this question here because the RR which is 70 uh, kilo Newton and the this value the front axle is 72 kilo Newton which is already given to you. So, from here you can know that RR is this and RF is 72 kilo Newton that means this tractor is a four wheel drive tractor and hence the answer is that this is a four wheel drive tractor. Well, we go to a working condition. Now, the moment we go to a working condition, you please consider the previous figure and this figure here. There, we had not talked of the um, force um, and we have said that P is equal to 0. Now, here we have put an implement, put an So, here we have said that there is a um, force here and this will have two components very simple as you have seen earlier that when there will be a line of pull through the line of pull there will be a pull force acting. So, the, um, uh, the horizontal component will be um, the uh, pull and this will be in the um, P y will be acting downwards. Now, this is the location where it acts where the uh, weight of the implement is also acting at this particular point the location of this particular point is about a distance y 1 which is y 1 vertical distance of center of resistance from the ground wheel this. Here the moment the tractor is in soil you will find that the contact point is not exactly under the, in the center line as we had seen in the earlier case uh, in the earlier case. It is slightly at a distance E f in case of the E f and in case of the front wheels and E r in case of the rear wheels. And therefore, you will find that this distance E r and E f have been very clearly indicated when the, same, when the uh, implement is in the working condition and the implement is working condition in the soil. And the other related uh, forces will be R r rolling resistance in the front, similarly R r rolling resistance at the um, rear and H d this is the gross tractive force. So, now from the static condition of simple keeping the tractor you have come to a condition where the uh, this combination is working in the field this will happen. So, if we take the vertical um, uh, this is V is equal to 0 and then the forces if we take the summation of the forces this is what we get here then taking moment about C this is the point C here. So, if you take moment about point C here we get the equation T s w with respect to this here where w m p y p x r are indicated here p x p a w m is the weight p x is in this direction p y is here. So, we get this then the <coughs> forward uh, um, uh, the front wheel dynamic reaction is given by this here. Now, taking moment about point d when you take moment about point d over here we get the rear wheel uh, um, uh, dynamic reaction by this and x 1 um, uh, total distance which comprises x m that means distance from the center line of the wheel to the center uh, um, of the resistance and the wheel base plus E f because this will talk if you are taking moment about d then x 1 is given by this where x 1 has been used uh, in the equation wherever x 1 has been used in the equation this is the value which happens. So, if you take the moment then from the previous one now here condition different. Now, we will see another condition in which when it is at certain angle. Yes, so this this you can see that same combination, but now it is a certain angle uh, slope.
it is on a slope here. So, the moment it is on a slope, a slope beta comes into play here and then we have the forces which we discussed earlier. The um, C g will act here and the components the cos uh, beta will be in this direction, sin beta will be acting in this direction here. Then this is the force f which acts the line of pull. Then it will it will have a component f cos alpha here, then a component um, which is f sin alpha here, and this is the um, R f over here. This is the point of resistance. This portion is the uh, rolling resistance. In fact, this should be rolling resistance here R f front wheel and this R r here rolling resistance in this. All the forces which we have shown there are same here except that the nomenclature certain distances say x p is the distance from the center of this point h okay. and y, y p is from this location here. So, y p and x p has been explained to you as um, what is their position with respect to this line. This is the line which is drawn which is at an angle of beta from the horizontal line. So, considering similar aspects of mechanics here we find that the pull f is equal to f s and is given by this here and at r f is equal to 0. Now, this is a condition which needs to be considered what will happen is the moment I have said earlier the moment there is a pull to the um, on to the tractor the um, uh, there will be change in the reaction and hence there will be uh, and may not be a physical, but there will be a weight transfer taking this weight transfer and that means this value of R f the, uh, the reaction force on the front wheel will start decreasing, it will start decreasing. So, a point a limiting point where we can say that the maximum pull force that we can get uh, f s the maximum pull force which will be equal to f s e when R f is equal to 0. So, R f is equal to 0 this is the value we know the angle alpha we know angle beta we know m t, we know y c, we know y p all this x 1, x 2 detail all details are there then we will be in a position to find out this f s. Now, look at the traction how do we get actually the, um, uh, the pulling ability of the um, tractor wheel uh, um, of the implement, how um, what do we get from there. See here we have given this set, um, uh, tractor wheel here and its imprint its um, uh, footprint is um, shown over here and you can see that this is virtually an elliptical in shape here it is virtually an elliptical in shape with the length here and the breadth here. Now, what happens whenever we have a uh, supposing that these grips these grips when uh, here soil is fixed now where the moment it goes into the soil soil will come inside this it is just like as if we have some sort of a uh, here and there will be soil into this. Now, if there is a load on this here say a certain load w then the force required to put here an f. So, when we are trying to push this what will happen is this will have a resistance being offered. Now, that resistance will be offered on the basis of what is the area and what is the cohesion force you can say uh, cohesion between the particles here. Now, this same thing has been uh, very nicely said by Coulomb's by Coulomb's equation which is given as over here f is equal to a c plus w tan phi. So, the force this force is the um, force which is uh, the shear force this shear force is given as w is the normal weight coming on to this and A is, is the area on which it has uh, it is, is acting area of the footprint. So, we get that f is equal to A c into this where phi is the um, angle of uh, internal friction which has been explained over here. Now, this is very important so far as the capability of the uh, tractors lug is there because then this lug 
if the, there is, uh, if the change in the design of the lug will have a greater bearing on the pulling ability of the tractor and higher uh, tractors have higher sizes of the tractor wheels. You might have seen that we are starting from uh, 12.4 into 28 to 13.6 and uh, maybe even higher than that. So, those values will have a greater bearing. So, larger tractors have larger wheels and uh, because they can pull these um, uh, the implement larger implements. Of course, the torque is onto the um, tractor axle here and we know that when the um, torque is acting at this um, position here at this location is the pull here. So, we have to have a this is the one which we are talking of the torque here. Now, this torque and this center distance will uh, will make up the total torque this is the force here and this R will make the um, uh, torque. Now, while we are getting the torque out of this the important parameter is the lugs which are here. So, these lugs if these lugs are not properly designed or these are worn out then the pulling ability will decrease of this. So, it is important to understand that the lugs of the tractor are important and if the lugs are not there then this uh, the, the pulling ability will be simply uh, virtually 0 and is given by the famous equation this. This footprint is not necessarily a rectangular one. This footprint is uh, in fact, a, we find that this is uh, generally an elliptical in shape. This is elliptical in shape. You can say that this is elliptical in shape here with L and B and therefore, as it is said here, therefore the pressure which we get on to this P is W by 0.78 BL. This has been worked out that the value is 0.78 times not BL which is for a rectangular case. For a track of course, this is W by BL and the value of this uh, inter angle of internal friction varies from 25 to 45 depending on the soil structure yes and C is the cohesion force and cohesion force for a pure sand C is equal to 0. So, when we talk of the traction which is nothing but the <coughs> uh, driving force developed by a wheel track or other traction device this is traction. It is important to understand that without the proper tractive traction wheel you cannot get enough traction or enough pulling ability of the uh, uh, of the tractor or from the power of the tractor. So, traction is the driving force developed by the wheel or a track or any other device which we get and its bearing is on the lugs which are there which has a gripping capacity uh, capability onto the soil when they grip the soil and is being pulled depending upon the type of the soil um, the C and 5 values the C and 5 values the amount of force this force shear force will depend and we will be in a position to get what is the total pulling ability of the tractor. Now, if you see the um, same thing here it is very nicely um, told about uh, this particular driving wheel that D is the um, D is the pull here and WT is the weight coming out to this and uh, the force is here this is the soil force over here the rolling resistance over here and this is the vertical force of the uh, soil reaction and GT is the gross, track, uh, gross uh, tractive force over here and tau is the torque. So, this is the mechanics or the one or the point of consideration for you when you want to design a particular implement or try, try to find out the total power for a particular implement width of an implement while connected to a soil. So, it is very important to understand this aspect of traction and when we are talking of attaching of the implements we are simply talking how to attach. Once it is attached we must see what are the forces which are acting there and uh, once the forces are coming we should see what is the traction device which is developing this particular amount of traction which will actually help us in getting the uh, design of the implement which we want. Well, I talked of the, the tires it is also very important to know what are these tires and how these tires 
are uh, employed and what is their design, under what conditions which type of tyres are used, why certain type of tyres are used under uh, field conditions, why uh, different types of um, tyres are used under uh, road conditions. We see that most of the tyre track tyres which we have are the biosupply tyres which are uh, used like this here. Now, this, um, uh, this is the rim diameter say uh, 12 ply rating 13.6. If this is the definition of this particular tyre, then we know it has also been uh, told to you earlier even in the um, uh, field condition I told that what is the um, look meaning of these uh, which is written on the tyre itself. You can see the cross signal by supply the these plies these uh, fibers and these fibers are making an angle of 45 degrees. In case of this it is not a situation they are parallel here virtually and the condition under which these radial tyres in fact these radial tyres rolling higher uh, higher rolling resistance, but improved coefficient of traction is uh, obtained in case of radial tyres. And uh, these radial tyres you must have seen that mostly these are being used in our passenger vehicles which are mostly going on to the roads um, uh, and uh, high speed vehicles. They have their own uh, advantages, but when we talk of the tracking ability or the pulling ability that is not so much in these as compared to the biosupply ratings or biosupply type of tyres. So, uh, it is important to understand why this type of tyres are used uh, mostly in tractors and not this type. Although in European condition these are also used uh, because most of the time those are being used on uh, road conditions and uh, uh, for haulage operations or other uh, earth moving operations. So, those are being used, but these are the ones which are used under uh, Indian conditions or in not in European uh, non European conditions. Turn to related traction models. Now, <coughs> we talked, I said that uh, we will be also talking of some of the prediction models. Now, I have been telling in the beginning itself that uh, the moment uh, there will be the forces are there on the wheels and the moment there is a uh, pull behind the tractor because of the implement there will be change in these reactions. And when there is a change in the reactions there will be weight transfer taking place which is physically we do not see, but yes there is a change. Because as we discussed earlier that the moment RF uh, comes to 0 uh, virtually the implement will get lifted at and that is why at a limiting value of RF we find what is the maximum pull that we can get and hence we must limit the uh, maximum pull within pull within that value. Now, the moment we have a wheel we have a heel, wheel and if this wheel is rolled up let us say that for one rotation. So, this distance if this is the diameter of the wheel is if the diameter of wheel is d this is d here then this will be pi d for one revolution. Now, a condition on a condition if you see that this is on a road on a road or a level road where there is no load where there is no load where no load on the wheel. So, when there is no load on the wheel we will call this the radius of the wheel this diameter d is equal to 2 r. So, this radius is then known as rolling radius. So, this r, r is known as rolling radius. So, the rolling radius is the radius obtained when under 0 conditions that is under 0 condition. 
So, if we want to define this what is rolling resistance uh, rolling radius rolling radius is the radius obtained by rotation of the wheel under a zero load condition divided by 2 pi. So, this uh, distance suppose this is the distance s. So, s by 2 pi will be r here this is what is the rolling radius uh, which we design design here. Now, since there is <coughs> there will be a change in the reaction these reactions and if this distance is changed because of some load. Now, this was a condition when there was no load when there is a load now supposing there is a load on the wheel. So, there will be load on the wheel the moment there is a load on the wheel what will happen the earlier distance O d will not remain O d. Now, it will become now O d say 1 where where this d 1 will be less than d where this d 1 will be less than d. Now, since d 1 is less than d we will say <coughs> that there is a reduction in the distance travelled because this pi d will become now pi d 1 and pi d 1. So, the distance pi d is greater than pi d 1. Now, that means there is a reduction. So, this reduction is known as travel reduction and now this travel reduction uh, happens because of the load behind the um, uh, wheel because of which there is a slippage of the field which occurs. So, sometimes interchangeably this um, uh, travel reduction is also known as wheel slip the, uh, which has to happen. Ideally, it should be 0 ideally what we want is d 1 should be equal to d uh, only, but it does not happen uh, there because the definitely when the load is required there will be some resistance required for overcoming that and that is why we will have a wheel slippage. So, we talk of that as wheel slippage so, we uh, it could be wheel slip or it could be called travel reduction or travel reduction ratio. Now, this travel reduction ratio is now given as 1 minus VA by V where the actual velocity by theoretical velocity here. Then other uh, aspects of the um, uh, tractive models talk of drawbar power. Now, we know the drawbar power we have if we know the drawbar force um, we can multiply by the velocity we can get the drawbar power and the axle power the axle power is the power which we are getting at the axle of the um, tractor which is in fact uh, not possible to find out there are other ways by which we can find out, but yes there is a um, uh, power which is coming at the tractor axle and from here we get through the wheels now net traction. So, why we call net traction here because the pull which we have got earlier and the rolling resistance which we have got there will be difference in this and then the dynamic reel. So, the net traction coefficient is given through this equation and coefficient of rolling resistance is rolling resistance by dynamic load on to the wheel. So, it is it is easier to understand once you know about what is a uh, rolling radius and what are the travel reductions, what slippage uh, takes place, what uh, slippage happens in the wheel because of which there will be a traction uh, which will be a gross traction and then there will be a traction which is net traction because the gross traction will take care of everything and the moment we talk of net traction we have to reduce I mean subtract the rolling resistance and then we will be in a position to get. Now, we, if we talk of coefficients we have to talk with respect to the total um, dynamic load which is coming out to the field and that is why we are talking of a coefficient here otherwise this, this is what is the uh, net uh, uh, load which is uh, net traction which we are getting and the moment we divide by this we are talking of the coefficient. Uh, coefficient. Similarly, rolling resistance we get here this is the value, but the moment we talk of with respect to the dynamic load which is coming onto the wheel it becomes a coefficient. There are certain other uh, aspects which need to be explained about the wheels. See where a wheel a simple wheel which has uh, only to be pulled here we call this wheel where there is no uh, the, the 
the there is no torque this torque is not there so this is a towed wheel this is we call as towed wheel the the, the famous example is the front wheel of the tire uh, tractor driving wheel now the moment we have a torque coming onto this wheel weight remaining same and the uh, the horizontal uh, this pull is there h pull is over here so when the driving pull h is zero uh, greater than zero we, we have and this is the reaction here we call this as a driving wheel the moment we have everything that is the weight coming here the reaction of the soil but there is no pull here when the pull is not there h is the pull so when the pull is zero we call this as a self propelled wheel and the and the example of this is the transport wheel of the power tiller so the rear wheel of wheel drive drive is the driving wheel and towed wheel is the front wheel and a self propelled wheel is the wheel example is our power wheel and the brake wheel is where we are calling where brake wheel where this torque is there and there is a soil reaction here and the pull is also uh, over here we call this to be a brake wheel traction models where there are the um, several uh, scientists have done several uh, studies and they have found out on the different types of models particularly in order to find out what are the different coefficients of rolling resistance gross traction and the net traction i have talked of gross traction net traction but the equations which have been given are just have a look at this that this is the equation which is given by wismar melluth in 1973 for for the rolling resistance for gross traction this is the equation here he has talked of the wheel slip in this case and cn a wheel numeric where which talks of ci bd y w where ci is the cone index we'll talk of cone index slightly later it's talked of the strength of the soil and the tractive force here the moment we talk of net tractive force it has to be gross tractive force minus the um, uh, the rolling resistance so you can just see that the net tractive force comes like this and the other details are explained over here so this is the traction model given by wismar and luth now another uh, scientist in 1987 brixes model what the uh, bismar melluth did not consider was this aspect of the delta by h delta by h which uh, delta caused the deflection of the tire and h is the sectional height we know that when the tire is uh, over here and then because of the um, this there will be a deflection coming up because of the soil pressure there will be deflections now this deflection we generally take this deflection d delta h uh, is the ratio of delta uh, by 20% of this on a normal uh, normal pressure that we maintain in this soils uh, in this uh, tires so he has considered this aspect and accordingly then he got a number instead of the uh, numeric wheel numeric which was there in case of this he here is got a mobility number b and given with this and he has also found out the rolling resistance as well as gross traction and so if you want to get the net traction definitely there is a difference of these two so these two models have been used all over the world being used all over the world depending on the soil depending on the condition which the person wants to study and they have been very popularly used and a lot of research is going on people at other locations also have done some work uh, see at iit kharagpur also we have done um, similar work and found out for uh, reactions particularly with respect to the soils which are uh, sandy lateritic sandy clay loam soils which are there in indian conditions so well these are the different uh, traction models as i said uh, from brixius and uh, wismar melluth and the conditions in under in indian conditions we have developed these models we will like in our next class i would also like to show you how 
we take we test these and what is a soil strength how do you maintain soil strength how do you measure soil strength how do you measure the traction of um, into the um, uh, lab conditions we will show you these in the next course of classes thank you